Welcome back to Film Fanatics, where we talk about the movies that have us obsessed, excited, and inspired. I'm Alan. And I'm Gaul. In this week's episode, we're reviewing DC's and Dwayne Johnson's lifelong passion project, Black Adam. And we're also reflecting on a favorite of our guest. We're being joined by Eric Sigman, also known as Sigmund Cinema on Instagram and the head of the Sigmund Cinema podcast. How are you today? Hey, how y'all doing? Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming, man. Uh, do you guys want to start with the trades where we talk about a little bit of the news this week? Sure, why not? There you go. <laughs> so, first of all, something that uh, uh, if you if you listen to the show, you know how much we love uh, this particular franchise. Uh, Creed, the new Creed trailer came out uh, for uh, Creed 3. Uh, very excitingly directed by Michael B. Jordan, which um, I'm, again, very excited about. And I, man, I love this trailer. What did you guys think? Uh, uh, want me to go? <laughs> yeah. Go for it. <laughs> well, um, yeah, the I think I'm one of the few. I, I love the, the first Creed, but I'm one of the few who actually liked the second one better. Ooh. Ooh. And that's not taking anything away from the first one because the first one was great. It's just something about the second one that it just hit a little better for me. I don't know. But um, Creed 3, um, like you mentioned, it's going to be directed by and the directorial debut for uh, Michael B. Jordan. And that's a tall order because this is, uh, you know, the Rocky franchise is a coveted franchise. But, um, yeah, that, it's an excellent trailer. I cannot wait for it. It's if you're familiar with the series, it's kind of like they combined um, Clever Lane and Drago together for this dude. <laughs> I think there was like a theory for a long time. Was Jonathan Majors going to be Clubber Lang's son? Because they had Drago's son yeah. for Creed too. But it seems like it's a completely new character. Yeah, that's um, what I heard too. It would have been interesting, but I'm kind of glad they didn't go. That would have been lazy, especially after the second. It would have been kind of the same thing, yeah. But I am I definitely understand why you prefer Creed 2. I maybe would give the first one a hair, but it's close for me. I think the second one's the only one I saw in theaters. Uh, yeah, it's pretty close for me too. Like, I, I also prefer the first one, but again, it's not by much. Uh, they're two fantastic movies. And uh, I I did watch both of them in the at the theater, and it was like, especially Creed 1, was like an unbelievable experience. Honestly, like, um, that final fight... Everyone was cheering. It was it was really really fun. Like uh, I'll I'll never forget that honestly. And um, yeah, I'm kind of I agree with you guys. I'm really glad they're doing something new, something different. Uh, I'm glad that Jonathan Major's character is not someone we we know or like someone's kid because not only in this franchise, but this is getting a little bit old in general. Um, <laughs> All this nostalgia bait, we talk about that a lot here. And uh, it seems like they have a really interesting dynamic that I don't know would have been possible uh, had he been related to to another character in the universe. I feel like uh, if it... Having this, like, liberty, you can put him in, uh, in Creed's life since he was a boy. And, like, they have, like, this uh rivalry slash friendship since they were kids and i think that that can be really interesting to to explore and it can be very creed centric and yeah. not at all like because like the other ones were very creed centric of course but they still had a lot of rocky in them He's i'm not really in this movie at all apparently yeah i'm really i'm really excited to explore the character of creed fo- fully like by himself i feel like even though i'm not sure if they did it in the best way with stallone uh uh with like the actor himself but like i'm really excited like creatively where are they taking this movie i actually thought i really liked how his arc ended up how rocky balboa's arc ended up in the last couple movies like with his son and everything i thought that was pretty good yeah yeah. great Uh, gal let's move on to the next one all right, so it seems like uh, DC's already been announcing more than just uh, the movie that they have out this weekend. Uh, so seems like we're finally getting more news on a Superman movie. 
um, Man of Steel 2, because like Batman v Superman was Man of Steel 1.5, I guess. Um, for a while, Christopher McQuarrie was attached to write a Superman movie, and I don't know where that still stands now. But yeah, they're still looking for like more writers and a director. Yeah, that was killed by uh, Hamada and Jeff Jones, I think. Of course. Uh, be- they liked killing good ideas, so <laughs> why not? Uh, but um, that actually sounds like the best option. I'm not sure that that's what we're going to get because it's still DC and it's still WB. So I'm still hoping for the worst <laughs> possible option to, to be the one that we get. <laughs> but... Um, but I'm excited, man. He's my favorite Superman, and like I feel like he needs, he needs his own movie. He like he played his this character for so long. He went through so much shit with the fans, <laughs> um, but now everyone backs him, and everyone loves him, and everyone wants him back. And I feel like he, I feel like he he should get, he should um, he should get it. I feel like uh, we should get some decent writers in here because that's usually the problem. With this big superhero movies is the script, so let's get some good writers in here. And uh, I think we've yeah. talked about this before. It's very subjective, but I think we enjoy Henry Cavill's Superman the most, probably. But I don't know you. It's interesting. Um, no, sorry about that. Uh, so even no matter which version of Justice League that you watch, um, Cavill's role is essentially uh, extended cameo. Yeah. And. Batman v Superman, somebody actually did uh, a line count, a dialogue count, and he doesn't have a lot of lines in the movie, which is interesting. I think somebody said 200 lines or something, which is not a lot for basically the, the second Titular lead, character. The second lead. Yeah. And this, yeah, I think uh, it's long overdue. And like you said, the, the Warner Brothers, the Warner Brothers debacle. That's a shame when you have to say that, but it's true expect the worst outcome because of the decision makers but i think it's getting better uh seems to be but you just hope for the best if that's just me i'm just optimistic yeah yeah i think just uh i'm like comics wise and stuff like since i was a kid i've always been more of a dc fan than a marvel fan um so it hasn't been great uh <laughs> even though i love marvel like uh for sure like i go to every mcu movie like right away and i watch all the shows but like you know I'm, i've always been like a batman guy like a superman guy so it does suck to like have this <laughs> like this happen over and over again which i guess why it's why i'm less optimistic than you i'm like we've seen this movie before <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Superman's all about hope, I guess. So I'm hoping this time will be different. And uh, yeah, the second news that came out kind of is that James Gunn has like a secret movie that he's doing. It's kind of weird. Uh, but I'm assuming that would be the Suicide Squad 2, 3. I don't know. Uh, title wise, what that would be, but um, that that's my assumption what do you guys think um i don't know what it is but i'm honestly down for whatever just because uh both peacemaker and the suicide squad were just um my two favorite dceu things so far so i'm hyped for whatever he does yeah it's uh man is james gunn like the most powerful filmmaker in comic book movies because he's still doing um guardians 3 right yeah it's coming out in may yeah, and now he's, he has two major. And the holiday special, it's coming out. He's the Christmas. only person in Hollywood that got canceled and got a better better career after being canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, okay, we'll give you another franchise now that you got canceled. <laughs> yeah, but that's curious. Um, I don't know why would they want the the, the secret project. I, I think it might be something other than Suicide Squad because. I would think they would want that to be announced publicly. That's that's just my thing. Yeah, you may be right. Maybe yeah. here's me being optimistic again. Uh, <laughs> James Gunn is doing the Superman, the Man of Steel project. That was actually... Ooh. Rumor has that he was first offered a Superman project before he said, I want to do Suicide Squad 2. But you never know. Maybe, uh, Maybe what goes around comes around and he, he wants to do it. 
doubt. Yeah. That's just me being. But I'm not curious because uh, James Gunn is a fantastic filmmaker. Uh, um, like you said, uh, um, Peacemaker is probably the best thing in television, no matter what genre that can. That's that was just. I loved that show. It was so much fun. It, it, it'll be ignored by the Emmys and well, probably was. I don't know what the, uh, the timeline was when it came out. Yeah, I, I think did it was already he, eligible and didn't really get nominated for anything. Yeah, like yeah. they they wouldn't do that for that show <laughs> for sure. Like I mean, the the opening title sequence. I mean, because they have a category for that. So. Maybe I, I don't remember, but that's possible that they might have gotten nominated in that. Yeah. But even without all that, uh, it's a James James Gunn is a, just a fantastic uh, filmmaker. So whatever he's doing, I'm, I'm. You know what I just thought about. I don't know if they w- if it would work, but I would really like to see his take on the Teen Titans. I feel like, A, he's great with teams, like he's proven that he knows how, how to balance like a big team. And B, like the Teen Titans are like basically angsty, comedic teens and like some young adults. And I feel like he could have a lot of fun like with that. I'm sorry, but the Teen Titans show, the Titans show on HBO Max just really wore me out. I got sick of that. So I don't want that again already. No, but that's because it wasn't great. <laughs> when it's when you get something good, you like it. Did you watch the the cartoon? Like uh, the uh, the Teen Titans. Yeah. Um, no, um, not the one on um, HBO Max. If that's different from uh, the other. like the Cartoon Network. No, the Cartoon Network one ago. from like the two thousands. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, yeah. Oh yeah, I was all over that. That was my favorite thing to watch when I got home from school. Like honestly. Uh, and it sucks that they never got that right. Like, Titans was kind of cool for a while, but like not that much. And um, and uh, it was like in the in DC Universe wasn't even on HBO Max. I don't think they moved it because um, DC Universe doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I think it's a comic book service now. Maybe. Uh, anyway, like um, I I want to get that, but maybe it's too early for that because I think they're trying to build a universe, and um. Maybe like the sidekicks is gonna like the team of sidekicks would take longer to to get together. But I just think that would be a really funny movie, especially because what James Gunn did with uh, Scooby Doo. Speaking of cartoons, oh, I for I almost forgot he wrote those. Yeah, and I think it could be like a really funny like uh, crazy little movie. But like again, whatever he does, I'll be there. So, uh, can we move on to the next one, Gal? Yeah. Okay. What's our next news? So, the next one is about a franchise that I never watched. Um, the, the Conjuring 4 is announced to be in the works. Uh, did you guys watch that? Uh, the first three, I guess? I've seen the first three, but I haven't. I only got to them this year. I was like sick one day, and the first two were on Netflix. So, I, I watched those. And then I saw The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Horrible title. Which was not that great. Yeah, it wasn't that great, to be honest. Especially, like, you could tell that it wasn't James Wan anymore. And I felt like he made it unique. And I've never gotten to the Annabelle or the Nun movies. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, there's about eight or nine of those movies. In, in My the God. Universe. How? <laughs> The nun, yeah, it's crazy. It just exploded out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, the the first one is the best one, The Conjuring. The second one is gave us one of the series' most memorable characters with the nun and, and the crooked man. The and I agree. Um, the third one is just you can tell that's amazing. You can tell when a filmmaker is not present. It definitely, um, Juan James Wan is missed. Yeah. I actually like one and two equally. I think they're both pretty fun. Um, yeah, this, um, yeah, two is still good. I definitely liked it. Yeah, so I don't know. I thought after the third one, I was like, okay, they can just leave it. Uh, but I do like Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga in the movies together. Is there a director attached? No, but okay. I know Michael Chavez, who did Conjuring 3, is now doing The Nun 2. Which, I mean, how, they're trying to make the most money they can out of this. How on earth is the... 
is the Conjuring universe in better shape than the DC universe over <laughs> at Warner Brothers? How how is that possible? That's that's a, that's a shame to say, but yeah, you're right. It's um, we've I think there's more Conjuring movies at this point. There's, I, don't, I think there's nine, right? Or I don't know. God. Yeah. Uh, Not mistaken, there is nine. My God. So our last piece of news, uh, I think maybe uh, Sigmund, you have some things to say about this. Uh, Chad Stahelski is now directing a Black Samurai movie for Netflix. Um, I know you're like a big martial arts guy, so I know there was an original Black Samurai. Have you watched that? Um, I haven't, but um, the news I'm definitely excited for because... Um well, of course, because Chad is doing it, and obviously, you've all seen the, the John Wick movies. Yeah, those yep. movies have such like <laughs> versatile action that you want to see anything he can do. And yeah, and it's fantastic. You got a lot of these uh, filmmakers coming from stunt backgrounds, like um, Chad, and to point out another movie, Extraction, is going to seems to be turning into a series that was directed by um. A former stunt man. Yeah. And these guys know a lot about the camera and the camera placement, which makes them, I think, fantastic filmmakers when it comes to action. But yeah, this story is. I like just heard about it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it to see um, where he's gonna go with it. And it's um, supposed to be a series, correct? Um. Well, it says it's a movie right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just a just a, a little fact for you guys. I'm on IMDb right now, and our man Chet Stahelski has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten projects in development right now. Yeah. Was it <laughs> as a director? Was he supposed to do what, some other anime adaptation? I don't think it was Metal Gear Solid, but something else. He's also. doing Highlander, Ghost of oh, Tsushima, yeah. Gangsters of Shanghai, Black Samurai. Shibumi, uh, Sandman's Limb, Rain, Killer Be Killed, and Classified. I don't even know what all these are. So the plot for this one is... I'm happy he's getting work. <laughs> yeah, good for him. The plot for this one is an American soldier in Japan learns the ways of the most powerful martial arts and becomes the Black Samurai, embarking on a mission to stop dangerous forces who threaten everything he holds dear. So with this guy directing, there's potential. Yeah. I I would wa- I watch anything that either him or what's the other David Leitch or David Leitch do Lynch. like anything they do I'll be there and I'll be there in the movie theater like I'm not waiting for that to go on streaming or anything because those action scenes are fantastic to watch in the big screen. Yeah, uh, Sigmund, were you a fan of Bullet Train that came out this year? There are some uh, fantastic force that doesn't want me to see that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see it at least a handful of times. It's sold out. I went to go see it on Cinema Day and everybody else must have went to go see it and that didn't work. I haven't seen it yet. I'm very ashamed to say because everybody is, has good things to say about it. I think you would have a great time with it. Yeah. I need to, to rent that like after we're done here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, go for it. It's such a fun movie. I remember the reviews come out came out and they weren't that great, and I like we got a little bit nervous. But like after we watched it ourselves, we were like, "Damn, that's such a fun movie." I'm not gonna say it in case um, nobody else has seen it, but the cameos already ruined for me. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, that's I didn't know bad. Any of those. The, the, the the official advertisement did it. <laughs> what? Yeah, um, for the Blu-ray. They're like, they just- oh, oh, that's terrible. God. So I'm, I'm still not gonna say it, but I mean, it is Sony overall. Without that, it just makes me look more, you know, look to it more. That's about it. So yeah, yeah I need to get on that. All Alrighty. of the cameos got ruined for you. What's that? All of the cameos got ruined, or like just one or two? Um, I put it like this. I know three cameos. Okay, so maybe maybe there's still like a couple that you would be surprised by. I yeah, think. So I hope so. <laughs> but I put it like one one cameo is a woman. Okay. Uh, and, 
to our men. And yeah, that's all. Uh, I think the female actor was like listed in the cast a long time ago, but there were two like male <laughs> actors who weren't in any marketing. So there were huge surprises. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to our uh, beloved segment, Total Recall, where we talk about, um, you know, if movies had came out a while ago, still hold up today. And we love to bring on uh, a favorite film, one of the favorite films of our guest at the time. And we chose The Crow from 1994, which um, is still one of your favorite movies, right? Oh, and of course, you're talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, going back to somebody we just mentioned, here's um, um, something you got to get to know about me. I just love movie trivia. So, as you know, The Crow, unfortunately, Brandon Lee passed away from filming it. Yeah. So, Brandon Lee's double to um, shoot the scenes for when he passed away was Chad Gillespie. Really? I did not know that. <laughs> Chad started out as a stuntman back in the day, and he was um, double for Brandon Lee. And um, and for Keanu in The Matrix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he, he has a fantastic career as um, a stunt, stunt man. So um, one scene that is Chad for sure is when um, the character of Eric Draven is putting on a makeup. That's not Brandon Lee. That's Chad. Ooh. Ooh. For me, it felt yeah. pretty seamless. So some background. I on the did movie. not notice it, honestly, which is so weird because we're going to talk about this in Black Adam. But there was a CGI head that stuck out like a sore thumb, and it's 2022, <laughs> and they oh, managed to do it in 1994. <laughs> uh, uh. So let's talk. So, yeah, face replacement uh, was one of the first uses of face replacement in um, the Crow, which is still pretty good if you don't know where it's set. I mean, even if you do, but. So um, a bit about this movie. This movie came out in 1994 and was directed by Alex Proyas, who also directed I, Robot with Will Smith. Uh, the movie has 84% on Rotten Tomatoes and made about $94 million back in the day and also has three sequels in a TV series, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, TV series isn't that bad. It stars Mark DeCascos. No, oh. Okay. Uh, he was great in John Wick 3. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that connection that um, the Chad and... But, yeah, the movie um, is... I, I watched recently when I found out we were going to talk about it. I think it's a great movie. Um, Brandon Lee would have definitely been a star after this. But the movie itself yeah. is simple, straightforward. It's... Alex Proyas is one of the more underrated directors. You mentioned iRobot. I love his super underrated movie called Knowing. And um, there's another movie called Dark City, which is um, another great movie by him. But, um, yeah, back to The Crow. It's based on a comic. I don't know if you're all familiar with it. But I think it's a fantastic movie. If So Brandon Lee, who was a fantastic, was a fantastic martial artist doesn't depend on his martial arts skill for the movie. He acts in this movie, and he does a great job acting. And that's all he ever wanted to be, growing up in the shadow of Bruce Lee, you know. And he decided to go that route. But uh, I hope I'm not too long-winded, but I think the story is fantastic. Cinematography is A1. Uh, The score, I think this movie has a a superb score, Uh, especially with the, the Crow theme and the song score is great too with um, The Cure the song that's playing when he's putting on his makeup is one of my favorites but um, yeah I think I'm being too long winded just let me know if I am no like it's exciting for us to have you here for this one because I don't know about Gal but I'm most, almost 100% sure that neither of us has had watched it I watched until it. this weekend I watched it because we were bringing you on and I looked at like I know you had like a 5 star movie list and so I figured, like, The Crow would be a great one to watch for the first time. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this. Um, um, show my age a bit. Uh, I saw this in theaters when it first came out. In 1994, oh. I was blah, 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 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the, f- it's the first time in, in uh, here that, like, 
Uh, I would. I'm also gonna say that I wasn't alive because usually Gao says he, he wasn't alive, <laughs> and I never. I've never not been alive before, and this is the first time. <laughs> Except for when we did like Superman 1978. That's fair. <laughs> I was not alive back then. So, yeah, I wasn't alive for that one. So I'm, I'm, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Superman. But yeah. We find we found out that you were just like Black Adam, like you stayed frozen for like <laughs> how many, like five thousand years. Yeah, but uh, let me tell you this. Um, interestingly enough, um, the crow isn't officially released on 4K, but um, there is a 4K master out there because uh, I saw a screening in an art house theater about a month ago, and um, the creator of the comic was in attendance for Q&A, and they showed a 4K um, screening of the movie, which looks fantastic. So it, it looked as great as ever, and it, like I mentioned, um, you've been watching it just on Blu-ray. It's just a fantastic movie, and it's um, you know bittersweet to watch because of the circumstances. Yeah, I f I feel like that would be a better movie to watch on the big screen. Like I wa I watch I watch it on my laptop, which I hate doing so much <laughs> w with any movie. But like, especially this more like big action set piece type movies, I really hate watching on my laptop. Uh, it was like the circumstances. Uh, but like, I. I do wish I did wish I watched it in the big screen because like some of those action scenes like they were like really big and really fun and with like the lighting and like you said the cinematography like I feel like they would be fantastic to watch in the big screen like yeah especially considering it's a movie from like the 90s we recently reviewed um uh Blade yeah and I think the action pieces in this movie like are far superior. I actually like, told him I think this is a better blade. <laughs> and they came out during the same time. I think I, I I think I prefer the character of Blade, but like just yeah. because like I know him more, I guess. And uh like I'm more familiar with the comics and all that. But uh as far as a movie go uh, goes, I feel like this one has has a little bit of the edge. Yeah, I um no, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying I'll get that to you because um, when it comes to the Blade movies, the first Blade movie was um, good. I liked it, but I think Guillermo's The Toro Blade 2 is the best in the city. It's better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I definitely give you that. Um, the Crow um, over over Blade 1. Yeah. Um, yes, I think the main thing that holds up about this movie was actually Brandon Lee's performance. I I actually enjoyed his work quite a bit. Especially there's a scene where he like uh he gets shot through the hand and then he's just like holding up his hand and laughing. Um it kind of reminded me a little bit about I guess the coincidence that they it was the, both their last films, but it reminded me of Heath's performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight. Um just a little bit of like the Oh, it has a similar the vibe. crazy unhinged sort of vibe uh even though he's not like as much of an awful person. The long-haired white man going crazy. I guess. With makeup. <laughs> With makeup, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought the action was mostly good, mostly entertaining. Um, I thought I didn't really like the villain that much. I think it was Michael Wincott, right? Yeah, top dollar. <laughs> yeah. I think they didn't learn how to do villains until pretty recently <laughs> in superhero movies. The thing I think that holds it together with the villains of the Crow is, um, yeah, top dollar. Uh, Michael Wincott was just um, nothing special, whatever. But the the henchmen, like uh, David Patrick Kelly and um, the other ones, I think they are a little bit of glue that holds them together. You had the knife throwing guy and the druggy guy, and um, when he's uh, drugged out and he's in the office and he was telling top dollar about how. The crow killed his other guy, and yeah, it's, it's just crazy. yeah. No, the the henchmen are definitely better and like way more fun than uh than the actual villain. He top dollar kind of reminded me of the villain from the first Blade, to be honest. Um, but 
I didn't really know him before because he kind of made a comeback because he was in Nope. He was um he was Antlers, the cinematographer, and I didn't really know much that he had oh, done. Oh, really? That. I d- I did not realize that. <laughs> I, I I didn't realize it while I was watching it, but um. Michael Winkai, he's um, yeah, he's been around a bit. Um, he's in one of my favorite TV shows, um, called Twenty Four, but um, Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, Jack Bauer. Role. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's um not a memorable villain. To give you that. So it's just. Yeah, and I think, I don't know, do you think some of the editing is a little bit, because there's a shot with the crow, like, flying through the city, and sometimes it looks a little, like, doesn't hold up today with the CGI. I think it might just be because of today. Because, yeah, and the thing about that is, because you, assuming you watch it on Blu-ray or uh, some type of digital copy, right? Netflix. Yeah, there you go. So, um, movie like that was shot on film, and... Back in the day, um, there are certain uh, methods of special effects that they did, and when you when they transfer a movie to Blu-ray or 4K, sometimes those scenes show a little bit because of the process that they used. Yeah. So yeah, I know what you mean. It's like the you can tell like the bird is like in front of a projection screen or something like that in some shots. And um, yeah, but. The movie, you know, I think it pulls you in enough to where it doesn't take you out of it with those, um, with some of those. Shows. Yeah, over like. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Like overall, it really didn't pull me out of it that much. Like uh, the, um, like I didn't think there was there were like because a lot of times when we watch these action movies from back in the day, we're like it's pretty easy to point out like the stuff, like that was a little bit weird. But like I think overall, especially from a movie from '94, like. Holds up pretty well. And, um, uh, yeah, and I don't know how we got this far without talking about Ernie Hudson. Oh, yeah, he's one of the best parts. <laughs> he's like, he's honest, he is honestly my favorite, cra- my favorite character in the movie, like, easily. Yeah, and, um, like I mentioned, a henchman to, um, top dollar, you know, these characters are a strong glue, and, um, Ernie Hudson and his, um, his wise cracks. When there was um, there's a scene where the crow was written for. There's a blood painting of the crow, and he's like, I call it blood. And you might type it up as graffiti, <laughs> and stuff like that. Little silly lines. Yeah, and it was funny enough. Um, just, oh, go ahead. No, no, you go. You finish. Um, no, the supporting characters, the um, Shelly, I think her name was the character's name, the young girl. Um, she never made another movie after this. Really. And that's, that's weird to me. But, you know, even she had a, an okay performance. Yeah, Gao knows how much I hate kid actors usually here. Uh, is this one an exception which is, no? which is weird because I actually worked with kids. But, like, <laughs> kid actors I have a real problem with. Uh, and um, uh, I did not have, like, a bad time with her performance. Like, it wasn't that bad. Like, I bought her into the role. Like, it was fine. I always prefer to just have a whole adult cast, but like I know that sometimes, of course, the story <laughs> like yeah. you you need kids. They gave, her, um, they gave her a scene. I think she handled real real well. It's um, the scene where she goes back to the apartment and she's um, she's talking to Eric and saying, "Oh, you don't care," and then he shows up like, "I care." Um, you remember that scene? Yeah. So that scene. Was, yeah. Um, once again, not Brandon Lee. That was a reshoot, and she came back to shoot that. And I think that's a she handled that very well. Yeah, I think yeah. especially like um, now. I mean, like that was like the inclusion of Brandon Lee with some of those scenes was pretty seamless. Like we talk about, like so many people were concerned when they did Carrie Fisher in Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker, and you look at this, and uh, they did it excellently. Yeah, with the lack of technology, and, you know, and the yeah, lawsuit pending, it was, it was a lot of weight on this movie to um, behind the scenes, and uh, for it to have come out as good as it did. But um, okay, so um, to wrap up, uh, there's been talks about a reboot happening with Bill Skarsgård. It's filming now. Ah, it's filming now. Okay, yeah. so. 
There you go. That's why we have Gal and not Alan. And it is being directed by Rupert Sanders, who also directed the amazing uh, Ghost in the Shell with oh, Scarlett Johansson. No. No, not not a great movie, <laughs> but you never know. Maybe this one could be better. Uh, I think the problem with the well, there's a lot of problems with that ghost in the shell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, it, I think screenplay script is the strength of a good adaptation, and that's why I think I don't know if I'm biased because I'm a huge fan of the original Ghost in the Shell, but with these things you gotta you gotta know the um the, i guess the intellectual property whatever you call it you gotta get that script right can speaking of i'm gonna give you some good news i went to look who the script writer is and his name is zach bailing oh. and he wrote king richard creed 3 um and if it's zach bailing we're skull. in good hands like he he wrote one of the best movies of 2021 in King Richard and the script of that movie was fantastic. He was nominated for an Oscar. And he wrote Creed 3 as well, which we're just I don't we haven't seen it yet, but we're hoping it's uh, pretty good. Um so I have more faith in, in this now, now that I've seen this. <laughs> Do you think uh Bill Skarsgård is the right choice to play um Eric Draven? Oh, I love him. Actor, um, and man, everything probably. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, have you all seen Barbarian? Yeah, I've watched it. All right. Yeah, I think it's a uh, inspired choice. I, I'm, I'm highly curious about that. I think he'll be good. Um, I say yeah with that one. Who would you cast as Ernie Hudson's character uh, while we're having fun with this? Ooh, that. You know, honestly. I would cast Idris Elba. Ooh. Ooh, that would be fun. That would be interesting. Yeah, him with his um, American accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That off, because I think the first time I saw him with an American accent was Molly's Game. And it's a great movie, but it took me a while to get used to it. Because I'm just so used to thinking of him as like the cool British voice. Yeah. I recommend. Well, put him on a map for most of us. Uh, not just an American accent, but a uh, distinct Baltimore American accent in the show called The Wire. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fantastic in that, that show. I thought you were going to say American Gangster, but The Wire I haven't even gotten to. Yeah, American Gangster was, um, it was a decent, um, decent New York American accent. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the fact that he... For me, I got to know him through like Pacific Rim and Thor, so I just got used to him uh, with that first. His native, yeah. His uh-huh. native. Also, even though he had a British accent, I think it was a really good part of the. Oh, didn't he? Oh, I don't think he had a British accent Where? in the office. Um, that was American. He had an American accent in the office as well. I think that might have been the first time I heard his American accent because I've seen him in stuff before, and I think that was the first time I heard. Him and an American accent, and he was so funny in that show. He was such a dick, but he was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and it was such a such an amazing surprise because, like you know, I was not expecting to see him at all, like in a show like The Office. Right now, he has some good on comic comedic sensibilities. Uh, he was good. That was a I like they had him on there. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so it seems like we're all cautiously optimistic with uh, with this reboot, uh, as we are with most reboots, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, are you guys re- get, uh, ready to talk about some Black Adam? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I, d- I, I know what that means. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's talk about Black Adam. Black Adam just came out this weekend, uh, I think, worldwide. Uh, it starts Dwayne Johnson as uh, Black Adam, Black Adam, uh, Aldis Hodge as Hawkman, Pierce Brosnan as Doctor Frey, uh, Noah Centineo as the Adam Smasher, and who else? Quintessa Sindel as, C- as Cyclone, and Sarah Shahi as Adriana Thomas, and is directed by John Colette Sarah, who directed Gal. Um. 
lot Thank of you. Uh, <laughs> a lot of interesting movies. Um, <laughs> Unknown, Nonstop, The Commuter, Jungle Cruise, um, The Shallows, Orphan. A lot of movies that people may or may not enjoy. He's been hit and miss, I think, for most film fans. They had a contract with Liam Neeson there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they, uh, they must be good friends. So let's start with, uh, with the star, right? Dwayne Johnson has been cast on this role for like 15 years <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Uh, like, he still had hair, I think, when, uh, when they announced him, like, yeah. back in the blogs. <laughs> Oh seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh wow. Before, before they even had a plan for a DCEU. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he's been fighting for this role, I guess, very admir. Ad- oh my God, my English today, admirably for like the past <laughs> fifteen years. And I do admire the the hustle that it probably took to get this character out. I don't know. I think this movie needed a better script. <laughs> <laughs> but let's uh, let's start with him. He's a good Black Adam. I'm I'm like he's like he even though I didn't like that much how far from the comics it got. Um I feel I I feel like as a movie Black Adam he's like pretty great. Like he he does a good job. What did you guys think about him? Um Guess how it goes. <laughs> so, um, I think it is all right. So it's just average. If I was a, to say a word, average, average. Yeah, I was a action, yeah, average acting, average. The, the movie theater I saw it in, yeah, average. <laughs> <laughs> we went yesterday in IMAX together. It was. It was a really cool screen. That's what I'll say. Yeah, now, I saw it in um, Premium Cinema, uh, Cinemark XD. If y'all are familiar. With yeah, it. I, nice. I would only go to Cinemark for like the first eighteen years of my life. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and uh, also, I only went to Cinemark for like twenty years because they're the only big chain in Brazil. So there you go. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. But now the movie is, and I want to speak on this um, without getting too carried away. You got to be careful with. Um, setting up expectations. I try my best to go into every movie on um on an even plane when it comes to expectations. And you know, this is the Rock's is the Rock or Dwayne Johnson. I'm sorry, <laughs> this is his passion project. And you know, he's going all out with the promotion and isn't that? And I, I'm going to test screenings and and everybody's acting crazy. Yeah, everyone said it was like amazing, and we saw you in it. Like I saw that clip also. Yeah, and first of all, I don't think that's a smart idea. You're influencing test screenings. But anyway, that's just me. But, um, so yeah, the movie is the the marketing with the anticipation. Probably, um, there's more so the reason for my review. Um, I use, yeah, basically, we're all on Letterbox, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you know, the, the five star scale review, I gave it three stars there's nothing special it's nowhere near groundbreaking it's just your average superhero movie and the script like Alan was saying um, it's just kind of subpar yeah and yeah and for all of this and three people if I'm not mistaken if not four wrote this script and I don't see it <laughs> maybe that's the problem it was three people. And uh, like, good point. You know, that could be also the problem. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. But um, the pacing of the movie is interesting. It doesn't seem as um, doesn't seem as long as it is, which is usually um, a good thing. No, no bad movies too short. No good movies too long. I'd agree with that. Like it was, it was paced fine. Yeah. And also, you were talking about the writing. Uh, I don't think we should have been surprised. I I clicked in the first writer on IMDb. Oh, I think I saw this today actually. Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Road Chip, uh Rampage yeah. and Scoob. And so why wait, are we surprised? And Diary of a Wimpy Kid The Long Haul. Yeah, that's the the one I looked up. Uh, yeah, I like. <laughs> um that's funny. Oh, they they must have had some some awesome pitches and I don't know. Yeah. 
and who knows if these writers are even you know familiar with the source material but like this these days the yeah material don't seem to be important the thing is like and, uh, i'm wh- honestly as as like a comic book fan i feel like like and i mentioned this before um they did they took a lot of liberties here with um yeah. with these characters uh not even just him like but also with like uh hawkman and dr fade and like as a comic book fan like if you're if you're gonna do that it has to be amazing because if it isn't like you you get that feeling of what if and like then everything's gone i'm not really uh, sure okay i'm not i've never been that big on a as a comic reader so usually when i go into these i just want a movie and the thing with black adam as a character is they give him so much like exposition right and backstory and motivation for his rage as an anti-hero and it gets confusing as to like is he right is he wrong like is violence good now like i didn't get what the movie was trying to say and then these four justice society characters have no backstory or character arc really and they're all more interesting than him if i had to comment on it yeah like yeah yeah it's um yeah the yeah i guess um that's a good point and they they try to give um black adam his you know the flashbacks um like i'm not familiar with the um well, even in the comics, they changed them so much. They turned them from a straight villain to like an anti-hero. Yeah. And um, who knows which one that they they drew from? It's not a combination. But um, I wouldn't say that his backstory in the movie was weak, but it was for him to be the lead. You know, it wasn't as it didn't draw you in like it should have. Like you mentioned, mm-hmm. I'm more interested in um, Pierce Bronson character and um alan uh, not alan alice hodge <laughs> yeah alice um <laughs> uh, not in the movie business yet <laughs> hopefully soon <laughs> yeah it's okay i'll just yeah, so, yeah alan is hodge i'm like man i want to know like man, every time they on the screen I'm, I'm like man tell me more about them you know and but yeah it, it seems like they were rushing a bit they didn't want to it seemed like they didn't want to go the full speed with the, the black out they were playing it safe that's what i'm saying you know. i think yeah i think i was thinking and so there's a villain who i thought was pretty trash in the movie uh oh, boy. oh do you mean no uh I, I i put a name from him here because i did not remember his actual name marwan kanzari no 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 i'm i, ma- I meant the character not the actor oh Shabak, Shadok? Doesn't matter. Sadak. He's Hot Jafar the bad guy. Sabak. Hot Jafar the bad guy. That's Hot what Jafar. he is. I mean, yeah, he's pretty much just doing Jafar again. Um, but I was thinking, I feel like it would have been an inter- a more interesting movie if he wasn't really a big thing and the movie was just Justice Society versus Black Adam. And then it would be a whole, like, there would be something at stake. Like, like is killing really something that's necessary or what is the future of um the name of the city a uh, condoc yeah. like and i feel like there would have been more at stake there if it was a little less predictable and like by the books <laughs> with the structure and i love how the lesson you take away from this movie is like yes killing is okay <laughs> that is basically the the lesson you take away from this movie which is crazy and this is what i mean when um the movie wasn't brave enough, just like what you said um, on having this generic villain. I would have rather just been Black Adam and, um, you know, uh, the Justice Squad or whatever. <laughs> Justice Squad. But but it seems like they didn't want to... They were scared to make Black Adam a total villain. They wanted him to keep him in that anti-hero um, realm. And with him fighting with the... Um, yeah. I keep saying the squad and whatnot. It's, it's a society. society. The society. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, if it would have just been them throughout the movie, it would have been a much more interesting because it was predictable uh, as ever at the beginning of the movie. You know this guy was crooked and he was going to turn when they were looking for the crown and whatnot. I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a similar thing that I felt with um, 
BVS was a much better movie than this, especially like I the, disagree. The I, would, ult- I would rather rewatch especially, this. Especially the ult- the ultimate edition, the theater edition. Yeah, probably not. But like uh, the ultimate edition, I grew to like a lot more. Not much better, but like I think it's a little better. Uh, but like they they seem to be so scared to make like this these anti heroes the actual villains. I felt the and same they, with Venom. And also. they tack in like some crap villain at the end to like make these people come together, and it <laughs> never gels quite right. Like with yeah, BVS, that they like they hated each other the whole movie, and randomly, and okay, I guess that there's this goblin now, so I guess we're together. But their moms have the same <laughs> name. Have oh, the don't heart, man. Don't get me started on that. I hated that so much. It's like the, just the generic. Um, it's the stepbrothers. Did we just become best friends? Like, yeah. 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 Okay, let's go fight together. Exactly. But, like, I'll, I'll say here what I wish, again, what I wish and what really happened. It's never going to be the same thing. But, like, in the beginning, back in 07, <laughs> Black Adam was supposed to be the villain of a Shazam movie yeah. when uh, when he got cast. So, like... I feel like that would have been so much better. Even if you wanted to take him into like the anti-hero like role afterwards. If you had him as a proper villain in the first movie and maybe he's like trying to seek redemption because of like I don't know whatever happened between him and Shazam. Maybe they could have done like Shazam Fury of the Gods first and then lead into Black Adam. Yeah, and then like it's the story of how he becomes uh, an anti-hero. But he should have been a villain first. I feel like, like you're right. They're they're pulling the punches, when like this guy's straight up murdering a bunch of people, but you're afraid to actually call him a villain. I get they're bad guys, but like still not great. <laughs> so how did we feel about the CGI? Uh-oh. So, um, you all mentioned the scene with a face. <laughs> That Do was, you remember that my was rough. reaction to it? I literally went out loud like, oh, God. Like, it was disturbing. Gal got squimish at the movie. It was theater. disturbing. <laughs> like, and it's, it's right there up front, close. Yeah. Popping it and showing it. So, um, and when they did it in Captain America, it was so much better. And yeah. the, again, that was so long ago. 11 years ago. And um, yeah. 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 <laughs> Without giving it, because we're not going spoilers, right? No, we're not going spoilers because, like, yeah, yeah, we can take a little bit of spoilers at the end, but like for now, let's keep it. But no, um, like when he's flying in a suit and there's, for the most part, the visuals are okay when he's fighting and taking out when he first. Yeah, I agree. Okay, but you can tell um, the bad shots are really bad, and and they really should have. Yeah, um, push the movie a week or something, but that's what happened with these um, the visual effects company um, debacles, especially what's going on with Marvel Studios and the visual effects company. I will tell you that after watching like She Hulk and Moon Knight <laughs> and uh, Thor and all that, I feel like that was actually a great VFX job <laughs> after watching no, all Moon that. Moon Knight CGI was fine. <laughs> um, so, like. I don't know if maybe it's because my expectations are so low for CGI these days that I actually thought it was good. Uh, but like, yeah, like you said, like some shots you could really see it. Um, but, um, yeah. you know, uh, like Dr. Fate, uh, like all of his stuff was awesome. Oh, his powers were dope. Yeah. I will, I will say one thing that really rubbed me the wrong way, and I have a feeling both of you will agree with me. Why is this movie so obsessed in copying other superhero movies like it's a one it's one thing to pay homage but like there's a there's a scene that's straight up like quicksilver scenes from x-men and it's exactly that they're like with maybe a different song on top of it well but that's to be it. honest i enjoyed it just because nothing else in the movie was that great to start with <laughs> yeah i mean just they chose to do it, and, you know, it's like you said, it's a fine line between homage and just plain copying. But at least if they were going to do it, they did it well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like Gao said, it was probably the best part of the movie. There was, like, also 
um, a homage to a certain 60s movie that I may have once mentioned is one of my favorite movies. But um, again, it was very on the nose, but I didn't mind it just because it, it managed to lean into like the campy fun. Um, and there were a lot of like Snydery slow-mo shots, which uh, Alan also said this too. Yeah. Like, felt like he was trying to like be Zack Snyder with the style and everything. And I was like, okay, even it's the, a little much. Even the color palette and like the the style of the visuals, I felt like we're so Zack Snydery. And like... Like very 300-like. Yeah, and like that like coupled with like... It wasn't just this scene. I feel Like I felt a lot of times that I was like, I've seen this scene before in like a lot of movies. And like that coupled with the Zack Snyder thing like really rubbed me the wrong way. Like <laughs> about like the creative choices here. And um, there's another thing I hate. I don't know what it is for Hollywood and it's stereotype. Um, like you said, the color palette. Like in um, anywhere movies filmed in Egypt, <laughs> they have this color palette. I'm like, come on, y'all not y'all not over this yet. We live here. It does not I look was like in that. G- Egypt two months ago. It was actually pretty. Like we live in the Middle East. Yeah. It it I never seen anything so yeah. like orange. <laughs> when I was when I'm walking down the street, it's like Hollywood, like if you're going to Egypt or if you're going to Mexico, it's gonna be um, there's gonna be an orange tint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels like a thing that we should have already been past. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, I'm pretty sure y'all did say that to yourself, and like you said, it was it was gorgeous that other day. Like, what is this <laughs> this color palette that y'all are in love with when it comes to these? Um, these other countries I'm like cause Hollywood they don't do it to uh, American cities I'm like but you know they have their <laughs> their stereotypes like it always rains in Seattle and they just it's just things that they're in love with but yeah. I would've thought they would've yeah. or it rains when uh when a character breaks up with their significant other <laughs> every <laughs> time um, every single time <laughs> but um but going back to one thing you all said um and I don't know, I can kind of appreciate Dwayne Johnson for this, but I hope it doesn't get too out of control. Um, you were speaking about Black Adam being, should have been the villain for in the Shazam movie. And yeah. um, I think I read somewhere that was actually on the table, but of course Dwayne Johnson wanted his own movie. Yeah. But even with that, and, and I'm talking about ego. And, you know, Dwayne Johnson is Dwayne Johnson. And you can see him flexing his muscle a lot with a lot of things that happen in this movie that we won't spoil. And you got to appreciate him for that. Right. I mentioned that there was like a part where someone says, oh, like women love bald spots. And I was like, hmm, we can see Dwayne Johnson produced it. Yeah. You can you just see him smirking, standing over the writer. When... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's um, because the, the DCEU, the, the problem... With no matter who's um, if it's Hamada or the new, it's the. I think Hamada uh, got fired like two days ago. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the structure of, um, of continuity of this. This is why the MC, the Marvel Studios, succeed or DCEU fails. Is like it's not even too many cooks in the kitchen. It's just too many cooks in a house. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. And I, I don't think half of them are even cooks. <laughs> just uh, just standing around not doing anything and because um like we spoke with the man and still and how they, they they rushed into it with the batman v superman justice league is hopefully they're getting it together but, yeah um, i i don't think they are <laughs> <laughs> that's why i said hopefully i like, mean uh we'll see at least um uh, at least the post credit scene got a reaction out of our crowd yeah everyone clapped because i if you're going with this, this decision you made. Okay, let's let's go into spoilers so we can actually talk about this. Okay. Yeah. So right. this is a spoiler alert. If you didn't watch Black Adam, go watch it. It's fun enough. It's a six out of ten. Yeah, spoiler. I would say five out of ten. Um, so yeah, spoiler. Marwan Kanzari turns into Satan at the end. No, let's not talk about the shit spoilers. Let's go into <laughs> the f- stuff that we actually want to talk about. That plays into what I'm saying. They gotta make a decision. You gotta have Black Adam fight Shazam and or Superman. 
you, you gotta you gotta make a decision. And that yeah. that tiptoey anti hero, you gotta make a decision. It it will pay off. And then you can deal with it later. Make Black Adam a hard feeling, like maybe in the future. Because he and Shazam have to fight. I mean, how, how are you gonna get around it? I was thinking of a of a comparison, like Daredevil versus the Punisher in the Netflix show. They really didn't back away. They didn't really they really didn't pull the punches there because the Punisher was an actual threat, but it's a character that people love. So there is that balance. You can find that. Right. Yeah. And we know what a Punisher was doing, what he was doing, and you know, it was it was that was a it was greatly written. But how they they brought that together. Yeah. Which seems to be the problem with a lot of these movies. The the writers just can't get it together. Yeah. And I think also, I think it was a little bit short sighted. Like, I get why The Rock wanted to be the star, but I think it's a little bit short sighted. I think if he could have gotten his own movie anyway, but I think if he waited and he was a villain first, it would have been, it would have made such a difference. Because I even remember, like. Talking, he wants to carry the DCU with Black Adam. <laughs> so he can't be a villain doing that. So, like, he's. I feel like he's going to transition into full on hero by, like, next year. So like, um, which is again kind of weird because he killed so many people. But like, um, the like the end of the movie, Superman shows up. It's Henry Cav- Cavill. It's not that shitty headless thing that we got on Shazam. That was the most embarrassing thing I ever saw in a movie theater. And Let's be uh, fair, Shazam was a good movie. It, I thought was, it was great. It was a great movie. Miles but better at least than Henry this one. Cavill's available to come on set. That's much more satisfying. Yeah, all that crap that was happening. Yeah, they blocked him. They didn't want him yeah. to come back. They wanted a new Superman. So, um, so yeah, like um, it was it was really fun, like to see him. I'm not gonna lie, I got really excited to see both of them like staring at each other after we just saw Viola Davis as Amanda Waller basically introducing him. Like I thought, I thought. Uh, even though the movie was mad, I was like, that moment, I was like, man, if they can pull this together, if they can pull their shit together, because they have such good actors doing this thing, and these are such good characters in the comics, like, you can make this work. Like, it's it's not that hard. It's honestly not that hard. <laughs> so let me ask you all this. Do you all know who um, Henry Cavill's agent is? Yeah, it's Danny Garcia. It's uh Oh, is it? Yeah. It's Dwayne Johnson's ex wife? Yeah. Yep. It's they have the same agent and um This is why I had faith that there were, something was gonna happen. Yeah, but I, I saw that the timeline was like this was just filmed like a month and a half yeah. ago or I'm something. I'm not surprised. Because I don't know if you remember when the rock got booed at Comic Con <laughs> because Henry Cavill didn't show up. And uh, <laughs> why? Like oh and um, maybe that had something to do with it. He felt disrespected or something, and he was like, "Okay, this is what you guys want. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you." Because that. that's that's happened before. Like, like people reacting negatively because some cameo didn't happen. If they do it slowly, like you know, we get the Flash, we get Aquaman two, we get Man of Steel two, Wonder Woman three, all that. And then maybe we get like another Justice League with with Shazam if he really wants to be the Justice villain. Justice League society. Maybe he can be the villain. Uh, but I think if you pull in all these characters together this soon, you're going to have the same problem you had before. Because like we spoke, who's going to be... Um, it has to be somebody who's going to be... You got to have a big, big, big baddie, but he's iconic heroes. Yeah. This is what I mean. If Dwayne Johnson, if you really, y'all really want to do something, imagine the Justice League or the Justice Society against a true villain, Black Adam. You know what yeah, I mean? and I feel like honestly, even yeah. just him wouldn't wouldn't cut it. I feel like if it is, if we did get a, like a big Justice League, because in the comic comics, the Justice League is huge. It's never like five guys, and uh, if we get like and. All the guys in the Justice Society eventually go to the Justice League and all that. Even some people, I think, from the Suicide Squad eventually go to the, uh, to the Justice League. Like, they get reformed or whatever. And um, if they do something like that, and, like, I know that they kind of tried to do that before, but because nobody watched 
just sweet and justice league because it was shit um <laughs> it didn't get made i would love to see maybe if they do make him an actual villain to make him like the leader of the um, of the injustice league and he would just have like uh, all a these of our own uh, a, a league of our own like you he, he would just have like all these badass feelings with him i feel like justice that would league too. that would work like and it doesn't have to be like cinema magic. It would work because it would be fun as hell. Yeah. Like just don't yeah. don't fuck up with the writing and like get decent yeah. action going and that's all we need. But speaking of the writing, hopefully we discussed earlier, hopefully James Gunn is working on something some magic things we just spoke about. Yeah. Because why would it why would it be secret is what I'm saying. Now. Yeah. You know. What if it is this project? Like something like with the Justice League and stuff. Take my money, man. Legion of Doom or something. Because he's great. He, so, yeah. how to wrap up, how would we rank this in the DCEU? Oof. Ooh. <laughs> wow. That's the. <laughs> Go ahead. I got to <laughs> uh, I got to think about this one. Okay. Let's see here. I would say. So, the Suicide Squad, Shazam, Wonder Woman, Aquaman are at top. That hasn't changed. Uh, Man of Steel is probably up there. Um, maybe then I would put Birds of Prey. And then, like, I feel like this would maybe be on the same level as, like, Wonder Woman 1984. I would put this above Oh, come on. This Batman is better than Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> oh, man. That's... I'd put it above, but still, like, I still over Batman v Superman and Suicide yeah. Squad 2016. Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition. <laughs> um, We're gonna fight here. Maybe, <laughs> and then it, I don't know. Like, I'm not huge on Zack Snyder's Justice League, so it's also there in the middle. You're a big fan, right? I'm a huge fan. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, he's one of me. Okay, do you have yours, Eric? Like, I don't have to say. Just off the top, I'm a. Um, like just just off the top, like uh, give me, give us like your favorites, well, maybe. Steel, I think Man of Steel is um, fantabulous. So, Man of Steel, the first Wonder Woman, and this is where we veer off. Um, Zack Snyder's Justice League, <laughs> Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition. Um, uh, what else would I put? So that's four. I would say it would probably be right outside of top five. Um, Black Adam, number five. Would be the Suicide Squad, I hope. You know what? Yeah, I, I agree. That. <laughs> okay. That's the one I was thinking. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd understand that ranking. Um, I'd also put Aquaman above Black Adam just because I actually enjoy it a little bit. Okay, yeah. Because I think I honestly think Aquaman is a similar sort of campy fun to this movie, but it it leaned into it better. That's fair. Um. Uh, I think my favorite DC DCU uh, movie is still Wonder Woman. Um, that makes sense. I I love that movie. The first time I saw it, I still love it, even though it has a weak ass villain in that. Yeah, that, um, that so that's what it reminded me of. Um, the um, what's his name? Uh, the Satan guy in this movie reminded me of Ares. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, uh, even though. Uh, God would probably hate me. I would put Justice League, uh, Zack Snyder's <laughs> Justice League, uh, then Man of Steel, uh, then Shazam, um, then BVS Ultimate Edition. I'm sorry again, y'all. Over the Suicide Squad. Then the Suicide Squad. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> then <Damn>. uh, <laughs> then Birds of Prey, Aquaman. Um, then I would put here Black Adam. Uh, then the original Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman 84, and then Justice League. Oh, come League. on. I'd put Justice League and Wonder Woman 84 Justice, over Suicide the, Squad. The, the original Justice League is the worst one for me. I'd put it over Suicide Squad, and I'd put Wonder Woman 84 over Suicide Squad. But... I, I w- I, maybe I would put it if I ever got to finish it. I just told Gal <laughs> this the other day. I tried to watch this movie like six times. And I've never been able to finish it. I always give up in the middle. I'm like, I cannot do this to myself. I feel like I deserve better. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my, my thing with Wonder Woman. But I would still not put it 
like lower than Justice League because that was a travesty. So yeah, it's right in the middle of the pack for me, Black Adam. So that's a great note to end on. Uh, Sigmund, any final thoughts? Yeah, um, it only... I'm being real optimistic. Black Adam, or whatever, whatever they do with it, should only go up because they have so many things they could. The potential is huge. Yeah, it, the potential is is right there. But Warner Brothers is gonna Warner Brother. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's let's end with, with like a fun question to all of us. Starting uh, starting for you, Eric. Uh, if you could get any DC movie ever and to, to put it in this dcu now Th- don't think about continuity nothing like that what movie would you get would you want right now i would want to get the sequel to Zack snyder's justice league um doomsday staring back at the justice league i want to know what happens after that yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> how about you gal um i know it's not gonna be that <laughs> uh i want that at the at the end like sort of the infinity war end game that would be decent um, but there needs to be a lot more before that. Um, no, but let's not something... think about continuity, like okay. anything, something you just love to see. I really had hopes for that Flash movie, and I want to say Shazam versus Black Adam because I still think that could be fun, or like Shazam Superman and Black Adam. Okay, so for me, maybe uh, I think ju- uh, like. Your the Justice League sequel would probably be up there, but since you just said it, I'm gonna say something else. Um, I would say the Flashpoint movie we never got and we were supposed to get, which is with do you know what I'm talking about? With um, um, what's his name? The actor that plays uh, the actor from The Walking Dead that plays Batman's dad in Batman v Jeffrey Superman. Dean Morgan with Jeffrey D. Morgan playing a really fucked up br- uh, b- uh, version of Bruce Wayne of, of the Batman sorry that uh, kills Thomas people Wayne. could it be worse than the Joker version of Thomas Wayne though no but like <laughs> uh, the Joker in that universe is Martha Wayne um, so and like I love the the animation and the comic uh, from uh, from the Flashpoint and I feel like a really faithful ab- adaptation in the DCU with all these great actors would have been something like fantastic. Most of what we're saying is what would have been. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that was a really great episode. Thank you so much for your time, Sigmund. It was a blast talking to you. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Thank That's you bad. so much. Uh, shout out your channel for uh, and, uh, your like all your social media channels. Cool. My social media across everything is Sigmund Cinema. No, no space. It's just Sigmund, S-I-G-M-O-N, Cinema. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, and and my podcast, which is on hiatus, but still plenty of episodes for you um, wherever you listen to your, to your podcast, Sigmund, the Sigmund Cinema Podcast. Nice. Great having you, man. Remember to follow us at Film Fanatic Spot on, like, everything, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, and subscribe to your YouTube channel and everything. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. I'm Alan. And I'm Gaul. See you soon.